This is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Get real. You all ready for this? Mm-hmm. Dun, 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 no. dun. No. Y'all, y'all, just this stop. This is a sham. <laughs> Welcome to DBL. Happy Wednesday. The show's already laughing. Yeah. I didn't hear about what. <laughs> We were talking about the Nordic track Nordic thing again. Track. Oh, yeah. We can't do yeah. it two days no. in a row. That's why it was being kept from me. <laughs> yeah. For my own good. Yeah. We yeah. were like, don't say it, don't yeah. say it, don't say it. Don't <laughs> got a show to do. <laughs> my friends over here. My friends. All right, let's get into this, guys. Love was in the air at the premiere of Jennifer Lopez's new film, Marry Me. Jen showed up with Ben Affleck, of course, and the two packed on the PDA, with Ben giving Jen a sweet kiss on her forehead. But if she's on the Today Show, don't ask her about a relationship with Ben. I thought that exact same thing. <laughs> And Adele made her return to the red carpet at the Brit Awards in London. She won for Best Song, Best Album, and Artist of the Year, Best Hair, Best Dress. <laughs> the last two were fake. But everyone is talking about that huge sparkler on her ring finger. A lot of fans on social media were speculating that it was an engagement ring given to her by her boyfriend, Rich Paul. Well, I hope so. His first name checks out. <laughs> <laughs> that, really is, that is a rock. Yeah. That Forget about all rock. of her talents. Let's talk about that ring. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, let's talk about like what took so long. Adele is so dope. It's amazing. We got, like, well, they haven't been together married. for that I'm, long. I'm just saying, like, I'm surprised that anybody let her go to the beginning. You're I'm sorry, be a I'm, an Adele. You're I'm, an, I'm an Adele fan. You got to let her mourn her past relationship in some sort of sense, I think right? Yeah, I, think, I think Rich Paul was like, come on. Well, he wasn't know. locked it down. Okay, how did we get to now they're engaged? Just a few weeks ago, she canceled her entire Vegas reg- residency because they were having relationship issues. And now she wears a diamond, which a lot of rich people have, and it doesn't necessarily mean anything but other does, than they're rich. But it does on the left yes. hand, left the finger. People That's, do it all the time. I know, agreed, but not Adele on the red carpet. Like, that to me was no, like I'm saying something. Disagreed. You know what you're doing if That's it's I mean. not an engagement ring. That's what I'm saying. No, you said agreed with Erica. People People do it all the time. I disagree. If you're if you're Adele, you can't play games with my heart. Backstreet Boys. Okay, are we talking about Adele or Backstreet Boys? <laughs> I mean, I'd rather talk about boy bands, okay. but... Yes. Let me just say one thing, too, is I heard that they were having relationship problems as well, and I'm wondering, does this be like let's make it all up with this huge ring. Like, let's just throw money at the issue and just have it. Does that you make sense? You can't throw money at Adele. Wait, or, exactly. No, you can't. Or maybe, yeah. just going out on a limb here. Fair enough. There was a certain piece of jewelry that she wanted to wear and her stylist brought for her and she was like, no. too big, no. too small, no. no, just perfect. No. Just perfect no. for 400,000 articles about in my marriage. <laughs> exactly. Like, it's, a, it's, yeah, I, it's, I don't know. I, I feel like that means something. You're making a I statement. I, it's Especially a statement. in a red carpet. I'm yeah. not ready to jump on this. Really? I'm not ready to jump. No. I can't believe we can't convince you of that. No. No, huh. I've been divorced and I've been dating. And After I've you been, were, okay, good question. After you were divorced, did you ever dare wear a ring on your ring finger that looked like an engagement ring? I wore whatever I wanted whenever I wanted to. <laughs> like, I wasn't like, oh, I can no, no longer wear anything on this hand. No, right, I wasn't. Right. I didn't feel like that. All right, here we go. We're moving on. Joseph Baena is revealing the moment he and the rest of the world found out that Arnold Schwarzenegger was his dad. So Joseph is on the cover of the March issue of Men's Health magazine. Mm. He told Men's Health that it happened when he was 13. His mom, Mildred Patricia, pulled him out of class and told him they had to go. Why? Because everyone was finding out who his father really was. He said that moment transformed his life in an instant. And while he now has a good relationship with his dad, Joseph says he never considered taking his name. He said that Arnold's old school and doesn't believe in handouts. And if he used his dad's contacts or asked him for favors, it would bring him it wouldn't bring him or it wouldn't bring him any honor Mm. from the 1900s. (laughs) And Joseph has been open about wanting to become an actor and bodybuilder like his dad. Well, you're doing this article and you're saying you don't want to use his name, but you pretty much dropped his name. That's a good point. I hadn't really thought about that. And also, I don't know. That's a really good point. Really? We're going to go after Joseph? No, I thought he, but like, he is kind of contradicting himself by being like, I don't care. That boy can, that man, I'm sorry, <laughs> can say whatever he wants to say. Okay, first of all, congratulations, <laughs> Joseph, because he grew into that phase. He did. And he is having large. a major glow up, yeah. okay? He is living in I his would moment. Say so. <laughs> and he should absolutely, he can say whatever he wants to say. This, everybody walked around and acted like they didn't know that he was Arnold Schwarzenegger's son. Like it wasn't literally written all over his face. (laughs) 
<laughs> so if he wants to drop his name, don't tell him about honor. Okay, that's a lo wrong conversation to be having. Yes, that is your daddy who apparently didn't recognize a mirror when he saw one for 13 years, or so they say. Uh, yeah, he can have this interview. See, but let I, him talk I just about have his father. With the honor thing and the whole like not using your name, why not use your connections to get? Because other people are going to do it. Because if Arnold Schwarzenegger's not, if Arnold's not your dad, but like you know somebody that works on the set, you'd be like, hey, buddy, can you get me an audition? Everybody's trying to use whatever they have. Yeah, right. Why not? And when the guy is your dad, don't take that. It, it, be ashamed of it. Run with it. A lot of people we see that are achieving are second generation. Chris Collinsworth's son who does uh, all the major football games, his son is now starting to do sideline reporting. The LeBron James' son is coming up underneath him under his tutelage mm -hmm. since day one. Your parent that's really good in this field should be able to help you in every way. I don't get the honor in, like, doing it the hard way. That just seems wildly inefficient. I agree <laughs> with you, but I think if your first interview coming out wanting to be an actor, you don't want to seem as you're riding your dad's coattails. Now, I thought you made a great point. I think he wants to separate himself from his dad, and this is a way to say By I'm not taking and to be well, an actor. I agree. The problem is, the dichotomy is, is that he just, all he said was all about his dad. So I agree with you. That article was a little confusing. Eric is jumping I don't know. <laughs> I, I am, because it, it really irritates me for any child not to be identified as your own. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to have a conversation about the idea that he, that's his dad. Like, good for him. A absolutely. That drives me crazy. I think that whole story was just absolutely insane. You see a child, you know that you have done something something to possibly put this child on this earth and then you don't publicly acknowledge him, he can say whatever he wants from henceforth forevermore. I, I think we're getting too far into this. I, I think, know, it's it's deep. It's really deep. Yeah, I, and I don't think we need to go that deep. I think for him, he wants to pave his own path, right? Mm -hmm. He's like, listen, Arnold's my dad. I think he accepts that to have a relationship. And he's saying, I, I don't want any favors. I want to do this on my own. And it looks like he's thriving. It looks like he looks good. He's doing good. And I think it's as simple as that. He just wants to pave his own path. Eric is on fire today. <laughs> no, Y'all are the I'm ones that are on. like, well, we, he's saying one thing, but he's doing another. And it's like, yeah, I, everybody's I say, hey, been shit. saying one thing and doing another <laughs> around here. So join the hypocrisy train. Exactly. I I don't know what's going on, but there's some underlying meaning to this, and I'm moving on. Comedian Heather McDonald is having the last laugh about a recent health scare. Heather fainted on stage during a stand-up show in Arizona last weekend. She posted the ordeal on Instagram, writing, when you fracture your skull after bragging about being vaccinated. So a warning to our viewers, this content may be disturbing. Have a look. I want you to know, double-vaxxed, booster, flu shot... Did shows, meet and greets, never got COVID. Clearly, Jesus loves me the most. Seriously. So nice. So nice. Oh. Boom. Wow. That, that, I mean, I have... Reminds me of Wendy Williams when she yes. felt very yeah. scary. Oh, yes. yeah. See, Moments. I was thinking about D.L. Hughley when he fell, oh, yes. remember? Um, yeah. And his manager tried to get out there and it didn't. You know what it is? It's not the fall. It's like when somebody's head kind of snaps back and hits. That's when I get yeah. really scared, especially an older, like, she, brain trauma is so. I know. And she, now she did. I watched her in the hospital and she had a big old bruise and it's a skull fracture and it's going to, she fell right on her eye, she said. Oh. So she's okay. She's making fun of it, which is kind of what you want. You don't want to be known for this moment when you're a comedian because you don't want people to be nervous around you because you don't laugh. So she's trying to get back to it. She's wearing sunglasses. Terribly scary, though. Yeah. She said she got really, really dizzy all of a sudden and hit it and people thought it was part of the act and then an EMS was actually in the audience and said no something's terribly wrong and uh, went up there and helped her. Oh. Yeah, it's, okay. it, it's weird you heard some laughs you like do, from the audience know, and you fall right? because you're like, you never know. You it's, it could be a prop fall. Yeah. yeah there is a prop fall but yeah very scary and we're glad she's okay. Coming up on DBL we chat with the very fundy Wendy McClendon, McClendon oh, Covey she tells us about reprising her role on Reno 911. When I said Wendy Williams I almost went into Wendy Williams. <laughs> <laughs> and a bizarre disqualification at the Winter Games. We'll explain what it had to do with baggy clothes. You say with Clendy? Closed captioning provided by... Hi. <laughs> yeah, uh, the, it just... Uh, you know Heather. I know Heather. Um, you know, obviously did uh, work with DL at the last... Uh, 
Firefly Autism uh, Charity Benefit. I didn't know he fainted. At yeah, something. he fainted at the Zanies in Nashville Club. I played a, a, a bunch of times. Great, great owners there. And, you know, it's this thing that I've always thought about with stand-ups. It's this weird thing where now we're traveling in kind of weird times. There's extra stress. You know, who knows? I think DL, he was, they said he was dehydrated oh, and, ex what do you call it, exhausted. And I think he had COVID, maybe he oh, did. Oh, God. And, um... The, you know, it's so it's weird because like you're laughing scary. and then, it, yeah, it's, it's like such a difference of you're so there to be comfortable and then you're so very uncomfortable. Yeah. The we, the weird thing about it is I've been sick when I, when I was um, on stage, but like when you go on stage, your adrenaline's going so much that you don't first. notice yeah, it. Yeah, you push through. So the fact yeah, that I'd rather not squeeze when you, that second when when you're you're on, if you're feeling bad forward. on stage, yeah, yeah, that means know. that like you feel so bad, it's overriding oh, well, adrenaline pulsing through your veins. So it's like really, really scary, but I'm glad she's okay. But uh you know, I, so it's also like I, I did learn this in, a, in comedy that, you don't want your audience to be nervous because when they're nervous like I said they don't laugh okay. so that's why you want a really sure, confident comic yeah, yeah. and when someone faints like that okay. you, yeah. if I were sure. she I'd want to get back onto it like right away does right. that make sense you don't want that to be like yeah, the thing you want to get back up there but I mean she's got a recovery yeah. Dude, ahead so skull like, fractures you know, serious for myself and I I've talked about it before when I almost passed out on stage I it's almost like a checklist of things that you try and do to keep the show going because yeah. as a comic you're like you feel responsible for the waitress right. making she sure that, that they get a chance to drop their check she said they had to cancel the second show right. she felt awful for the people of Tempe yeah, because Arizona because they had to all go home and there were other comics there right it's yeah, really yeah, yeah. it's really scary she was very so. kind to say that uh, yeah. I've been there but you're like should I sit down yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't sit totally. down should I talk faster I'm out of breath and like all these things you're trying to do is almost making it worse oh god and then you panic yeah Welcome back. America won its first gold medal at the Olympics in Beijing. Yay. I feel like it's been a minute, right? Yeah. It started it's a couple days of, ago. It's kind of getting uh -huh. weird. All yeah. right, well, let's get after it. 36-year-old Lindsay Jacob Ellis became the oldest U.S. woman to win gold in the snowboard cross. It's her fifth Olympics and 16 years since her last medal. Good for her. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't a good day for the alpine skier, Michaela Schifrin, who fell for the second time this week. High hopes for her. She said it feels like a really big letdown. Meantime, five female Olympic ski jumpers were disqualified for wearing suits that officials say were too baggy and could help them glide longer in the air. But I get confused here. The same outfits were reportedly cleared a day earlier. So how do you, how does that work? Yeah, I don't like this. No. There has to be some, uh, some consistency. You know, there has to be a constant here. If, uh, how long do they get to clear a uh, uniform for the Olympics? Shouldn't that be something that's done before the Olympics even start? Totally agree with you. There's a documentary right now called Bad Sport on Netflix about each episode's a different kind of scandal. And there's probably going to be investigation into this as to why one was cleared one day and not the next. It did kind of look kind of like a flying squirrel, like baggier, but they should have not been cleared from the day one. Yeah, I, Eric, I want to ask you, because you're good with the comeback. What would you say to somebody that's been looking for, looking forward, working towards something for years, and they just don't get it? Like, I look at her on that hill. Oh, Michaela. And I, yeah, Michaela, yeah. thank you. And I wonder, how do you get, what's the first step so that you don't go down a real dark path where you're gone for years? Yeah, I mean, when it comes to, first of all, if you're looking for this from a, um, athlete, uh, or athlete part, part Point of view? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Lolo Jones just came out mm -hmm. with a podcast that is absolutely about this wow. because she's had a lot of Olympic disappointment. So it's kind of like a comeback for Olympians. Mm. Um, but in terms of people, for us normal folks, mm. uh, that's hard. And it takes a lot of accountability, not only for things that were happened to you, but for things that you initiated. Yeah. Because if you can get to the root of how you can change something yourself as opposed to waiting for somebody else to change 
with what they did, then you're on the path to a comeback. Yeah, yeah. and I know Simone Biles tweeted at her, Michaela and Lindsey Vaughn, saying keep your head up high. And it reminded a lot of people of Simone Biles because she was on that snow ice just crying devastated for a really long time and you think about the mental aspect of these athletes and I think that came soaring back when we saw her like that it was yeah. really sad yeah how about getting your dreams taken away for your outfit right yeah, yeah. you know like, that someone said yeah go ahead wear that and then your dreams are taken away for that that's also like crazy. my outfits right mm. yeah, somebody okayed that all right <laughs> there's also some strange <laughs> stuff at the winter games check out this weird <laughs> backdrop to the big air ski venue many wondering if this was a nuclear power plant and some are even comparing it to the nuclear power plant from the simpsons that's pretty funny I mean, actually it's it turns out it's a former steel mill that shut down more than 15 years ago Maybe think about moving that if you're going to have the Olympics. <laughs> Meantime, athletes staying in the Olympic Village have remote control beds that have a variety of settings, including reading mode and zero gravity mode. Huh? huh? I don't get it. And what are the Olympians eating? Well, they can get noodles delivered from the ceiling fan by robots, and some are posting their meals, including breakfast with peas and eggs, matcha cookies, and a red bean bun. Uh, that's hey, a far cry from what we saw yesterday. If you get COVID, yeah. right? I think we showed this on the show yesterday, I believe. Yeah, that right? was hideous. You test positive, you get this breakfast, yeah, But those lunch, were paper plates, too. Can they get some so Listen, would whale? you feel, this is what we showed yesterday, so if you have COVID, this yeah. is what you get. Would you feel different if it was delivered to you by your ceiling fan? <laughs> no, I, I know, right? I was like, it, no. that was the saddest dinner coming no. ever. It's just such, it just seems very drab. I thought the Olympics were supposed to be festive. What'd you call that? The, a birthday in Shawshank? Oh, yeah, yeah. Birthday <laughs> dinner in Shawshank. That's but, what it looks like. You, you can't taste it anyway. You have COVID, so who that's cares? A, huh? <laughs> that's a good point. You yeah. don't we'll know. be right back. <laughs> this was Neil Young recently pulled his music from Spotify. The singer says he did it in order to protest the streaming service's choice to distribute the Joe Rogan Experience podcast. Young argues it contains, quote, unfactual, misleading, and false COVID information, unquote. Other celebrities like Joni Mitchell and India Ari have joined him. And recently, a Twitter user claimed that Barbara Streisand said she too would remove her music from Spotify if it doesn't deplatform Joe Rogan immediately. That tweet has nearly 16,000 likes and thousands of retweets. Facebook users also shared the same claim. But is it true? Let's verify. We went to these sources for an answer. On February 5th, Streisand said on Twitter that, quote, someone impersonating her, unquote, released a statement about the Spotify situation. She says she applauds the musicians who have removed their music because of Joe Rogan's comments and that she will investigate the situation further and make her own decision. A representative for Streisand confirmed to verify that claims about the artist pulling her music from the streaming service aren't true. Streisand's music is still available on Spotify as of Tuesday, February 8th. So we can verify, no. Barbara Streisand did not say she would remove her music from Spotify over the controversy surrounding Joe Rogan's podcast. With your Fast Fact, I'm Ariane Till. Figure skating is about a lot more than just skating. Let's connect the dots. There are five different types of figure skating events at the 2022 Beijing Winter Olympics. Jumps are the name of the game. That's because skaters only have a limited number of opportunities to impress. Skaters are limited to about seven minutes combined for both the short and long programs. That means jumps and spins are the way to score points. Different jumps and spins have different requirements. The more difficult the jump or spin, the more points, which is what the skaters are after. And that is Connecting the Dots. She's one of the funniest actresses of all time. Earlier, we sat down with Wendy McClendon Covey. Yeah, we sat down with her. That's what I said. And talked about the new season of Goldbergs. Check it out. <laughs> You have said that you were too crazy for network television. I want to hear why yeah. you said that. Well, you know, I just, I got my, my first big gig was Reno 911, and that was a very weird little show. And when I would go to auditions, I would just come away feeling like, I don't know. I don't know if I'm ever going to mm -hmm. get on a network show. I might just be a, a cable person for the rest of my life. So when the Goldbergs came along and the character was so bananas i was like ah this might be the one 
And here we are, nine years later, Yay! and it's right. working out. Congratulations. <laughs> well, Wendy, my best Thank friend, you. one of your work, you just <laughs> mentioned Reno 911. It's getting revived. What's the most exciting yes. part? Eight years of the Goldbergs, now you're returning to Reno 911. What's that like? Yeah, yeah. That was a trip because there was like, what, an 11 year gap or something between. We all thought it was done, but then. Quibi came out. I'm, I don't know if you remember we do. what Quibi was. <laughs> um, you know, we got together. We did some episodes for that. Quibi went away while we were still filming. <laughs> so we finished the season. And that season that we finished, which was like Halloween of 2020, we were all sequestered in a hotel filming this show. Um, that comes out on February 25th on wow. the Roku channel. Oh, that's so, incredible. And I don't know if you've seen the, the movie that's on Paramount Plus. We did another movie too called The Hunt for QAnon. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's hysterical. <laughs> it's hysterical and it's on Paramount Plus and I think you need it. Oh, it seems like it really it's like does. right up my alley on yes. a Friday night. Yes. The Hunt for QAnon. <laughs> oh God, read yes. on number one I put on and just watch and just cry. All I right. know. Let's talk about the Goldbergs. Yeah. I did audition. I didn't get you the part. You did? Yeah. <gasps> to be a mini you when your son was dating someone I was going to be a mini you She's and just, I got my hair done. No, you're just putting that oh out there. I didn't get it. I'll have a picture. I think I'll she pulled you. the trigger to make sure you didn't get it. I think so too, Wendy. It's not. <laughs> I'm very sorry to hear this. <laughs> it's okay. Don't worry. George Segal, though, passed away. He was an amazing, amazing man last year, and this is the first season without him. What was the yeah. set like without him? Did it just feel like the energy was different? You know, it was, it, it continues to be a loss that we feel, and I, it was like a year ago, maybe this week, that was the last time oh. I saw him, wow. you know, and we still continue to deal with him in storylines. We just filmed something where we have to go and pack up his his condo in Miami and we find out about some lover of his that we didn't know about. <laughs> and, you know, it's, we'll never stop talking about him. Yeah. But do we miss him every day? Yeah. And filming our first show back um, where we dealt with him, with him dying, it was all we could do to just get through it without sobbing yeah. and I my personally my face was like the size of a pumpkin because I just couldn't stop crying yeah. and I was like oh he's a good man you know what a what a uh honor that we even got to work with them. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, we that's what you, that's how you want people to talk that's about you after you pass. Right. Yes. So like, that, yeah. that is truly an yeah. awesome tribute. We had to get to this really quickly because I mean, let's be real. You have played the Goldbergs matriarch for almost a decade. Oh, so talk to us about I what your journey has been like as Beverly Goldberg. Why do we need a tech I mean, it's been the most fun I've ever had to play someone this insane. And Remember, she is a real person mm -hmm. Yes, who is out in the world and sometimes weighs in. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I, I absolutely love her. I love the whole family. It's, you know, I, I have no kids in real life. So I, watching these actors grow up as my children, it just, it just reiterates over and over. I'm too weak to be a mother. That's why I never did it. Amen. I, I, agree. I don't know how people do it. Um, it takes, you know, reserves of strength that I do not have. <laughs> but it has been such an honor and such a blessing to do it. We have the best time. I know that sounds cliche, but I really do enjoy going to work, and I'm glad that I get to spend so much time with these people. Well, it shows. Yeah. We, You are such Good. a gift. So is the show. Wendy, thank you so much. <laughs> Don't forget to watch The Goldbergs on ABC. We'll be right back. Thank Bye, you. Wendy. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Promotional Consideration is brought to you by... Every day, we help you separate fact from fiction in a world full of misinformation. And we ask you to send us your questions. Some of the most frequent questions we get are from people forwarding us potential scam emails. So we're going to show you five ways to make sure they're legit. Our sources are the Federal Trade Commission, U.S. Courts, Amazon, and the Social Security Administration. We're going to focus on phishing scams since they make up the bulk of emails we get. Email scammers have gotten really good at mimicking legit companies, like 
This one, that's supposedly from Amazon. How do we know it's a scam? First, check the from field, and you'll notice the sender uses a Google Group's email address. Amazon says its genuine emails are from an at Amazon.com account. The same advice holds for any company sending you an email, according to the FTC. Next, there's the urgent subject line. This email claims your account is locked and you need to take immediate action. Scammers often try to make you act before you have time to think. Third, it's addressed to a generic user, not a personal greeting. Fourth, the email uses poor grammar, saying your account are on hold. And finally, if you hover over the link to update your payment information, you'll see the URL that pops up doesn't go to Amazon. You can spot the same red flags in this email that Verify Viewer resent us. It claims you owe money to a company you've never heard of and warns of a warrant for your arrest. Again, it's from an unexpected sender, has an urgent tone, and isn't addressed to anyone personally. This time, they cite a section of federal law that doesn't exist, threaten to block your social security number, which can't be done, and ask you to email a Gmail account that doesn't even match the name of the law firm they used. U.S. Courts says federal warrants are only served in person by law enforcement. Then there's the same poor grammar, starting with, we are hereby to inform you that you are going to be legally prosecuted. Finally, let's look at an email sent to us from a Verify viewer that's supposedly from the Social Security Administration. The from field is a .gov email. The tone is informational. It's addressed to Social Security recipients in Minnesota. The email uses correct spelling and grammar, and the link goes to an official government site. The context also meets the limited reasons of why SSA would email you to raise awareness about programs and services. It does not ask for money or anything in return. So this email is legit. None of these are foolproof methods of spotting fake emails, but these five steps can help. If you're ever unsure, don't click on any link in the email. Instead, go directly to the website of the company that's supposedly emailing you and check your account. With your Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis. Budget airline Frontier is making a bid to buy rival Spirit. The merger would create the fifth largest U.S. carrier based on seat capacity and seventh largest on revenue. A lot is still unknown about the merger, like what happens to Frontier's popular discount club or Spirit's in-flight Wi-Fi service, or what the new company will even be called. But executives say at least one thing is clear. Affordable fares will still be a top priority, and they're hoping to significantly expand their offerings. Until the deal is finalized, the two companies will remain independent with their own fares, flights, and policies. Welcome back. If you're trying to lose weight, this tip could help. That's today's healthcare update sponsored by Go Health. A new tip study shows people who get seven to eight hours of sleep consume less calories. That's why it's important to have healthy sleep habits. If you're struggling to get good sleep, you got to talk to your doctor. And if you're looking for a health insurance plan, Go Health makes it easy. Call 1-800-650-2535 or visit GoHealth.com to find the plan that's right for you. So mm -hmm. important, but it's the first thing you sacrifice. If you've got something to do, you're like, I'll stay up all night, but you probably shouldn't. You should sleep and then get up in the morning. So took me 40 years to learn that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can't do it anymore. DBL's new every day. We'll see you tomorrow, same time, same place.